friends. Hope you're doing well. Um, so, it's been an uh, interesting couple days. Um, yesterday, my my girlfriend uh, did my did my makeup. Uh, and she gave me the full face of makeup. It did not look... I looked like a hot mess. I, I do not make a uh, super uh, attractive female. <laughs> so... That was fun. So that's what I did instead of making an ASMR video. So sorry if you came on here and didn't find anything. Uh, but I mean, there's only like five of you that come every day. So I appreciate the, the hell out of you five. Um, but yeah, I hope you're doing well. Um, I've been on a quest to watch a lot of movies lately. Uh, today I watched The Room and Rocky Horror Picture Show and two short films and also Mean Girls. So three features and two shorts, and I'm probably going to watch another short while I edit this uh, and stick in a picture of me with my uh, my my drag queen makeup, I guess. Um, I, I decided my, my drag queen name was Roast Beef Sandwich, uh, but I did look quite a mess. Um, <laughs> I, got, I got a video, I got pictures. I'll, I'll include them in here because I'm trying to be more cinematic or production value or... I don't know, I'm trying to have some cutaways, some stuff. Um, yeah, so that was that was yesterday. Today, uh, we just had the kind of a lazy day, watched movies, ate some vegan food from a, a local vegan place called Foma. It's really good. If you're ever in Omaha, Nebraska, stop by Foma. It's on Saddle Creek Road. Uh, say hi to Mick. Uh, he's the guy who owns the place. He's a real nice guy. Play hockey with him sometimes. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so I, today I wanted to talk about, uh, bad movies, um, and especially why I watch bad movies, because a lot of times I watch bad movies, and people are like, why do you watch, that? like, this crappy movie, and I'm like, yeah, and they're like, why are you watching it, why are you wasting your time, and I'm like, I don't think you're wasting your time, I think that, oh, well, there's two, I think there's two reasons to watch bad movies, one, from the general audience point of view is you can make fun of them and that sometimes makes the movie more fun to just sit with your friends and just like poke fun and like dumb stuff that happens in the movie and you can you can kind of like make an entire experience out of that i mean you've seen mystery science theater 3000 or riff tracks if you're familiar with that and it's just kind of like a fun thing you could do and you know you can really take things out of context and sometimes i've even like picked up like stupid movies for that purpose and, like, they've actually been, like, kind of okay. And you're like, oh, that's... I remember one time in, like, college, we picked up the movie Pulse. Because uh, we like, yeah, it's so stupid. Because they, they advertised the hell out of that movie. It's the one where, like, ghosts can come through the internet. Um, and we're like, whatever. But it ended up being so fucking scary that none of us had any smart-ass comments. And we had rented, like, four movies to do this, too. And afterwards, everybody was just like, so unsettled by the movie that we were just like, I'm going home. <laughs> so, you know, you never, sometimes, sometimes you get a winner. Uh, but the second reason I think you should watch bad movies, and here is a, a little parable that I think applies much greater to uh, other people than just filmmakers and artists, but when you take in bad art, especially art that's in your niche, you kind of like learn what's not good like what not to do and I think learning what not to do you know there's, a, there's that quote of like I've only seen so far by standing on the shoulders of giants and I think <clears throat> excuse me I think that it's not so much that we're standing on the shoulders of giants we're, just, we're standing on Christopher Nolan's shoulders and Quentin Tarantino and Frederick, Federico Fellini and Spielberg and Hitchcock and Kubrick and Kurosawa, you know, let me get some more film school names in there for you. But we're not so much standing watching a Spielberg movie. I learned less about filmmaking than watching a crappy movie on Netflix that has a half-naked woman on the cover. Because you learn very with the film, with the masterpiece, every piece is so meticulous that you're just like, that's it's amazing. Like, look how great it is. But when you watch the crappy thing, you see the flaws. And if you even kind of have like a passing knowledge of film, you see what's
what's wrong with the film and you're like oh this could have been and this could have been and this could have been and it's easy to shit on crappy films but when you when you start to develop the eye for things that are wrong as a filmmaker when you want to make your own films you can fix those things before they become problems granted filmmaking is a team sport and sometimes you you're the quarterback as the the filmmaker and uh you know the, the receivers will run whatever route they can and people will block you you know obstacles will come money is always an issue paying people all that stuff you have to get the team on the same page to execute what's in your head doesn't always come out that way but sometimes you can still pull out a win and i think that's true of like everything in life is that you can kind of study studying the greats i don't think is a successful move i think you want to study people that that had good intentions but didn't execute because then you can you see you know they went into it not trying to make a crappy movie no one's no one's beating themselves up and and putting in all the effort it takes to make a movie to make a piece of crap no one's doing that okay like some people are in it for the cash grab but they still want to make a good movie so they can make cash you know um and so like there's just little things just like lighting could have been better in the shots and like the shot lighting doesn't match and da, ba, da, ba, da. you know you see those things and you see story problems that should have been fixed in the rewrite before you got anybody on set and so you know your life is kind of like that you look at people that that meant well and maybe that's your parents and you can you can talk to these people and you can kind of see you know where they went wrong in their thinking and what they wish they would have done instead and to that i can give you some advice that i think i wish i would have kind of followed I, you know, i'm still pretty young at 34 which you know i don't look 34 it's because i got a baby face and a moisturized not really <laughs> my girlfriend moisturized my face the other day and i feel so smooth anyway um but y y some things that i think i've learned is is number one i wish i would have gotten investing earlier and i've only really gotten serious about it this year and th to be fair this year is a very good year to, to have done it because there was a big kind of crash and if you just kind of bought on the way back up you you could have made a lot of money um but like just getting learning about it figuring it out getting my retirement stuff together you know um and it, it's never been easier you have these apps like robin hood webull i don't know much about webull i use robin hood i tried it and i liked it um i also have like a brokerage account and to see the difference like the brokerage account it's confusing and it feels confusing on purpose because they want you to to hire them to to manage your portfolio but robin hood makes it really easy and i'm pretty sure webull is probably very similar and then it kind of spells out things. This is what this is. This is what this is. Cool. And you're like, oh, okay, I can, I can kind of get this. And it makes it fun. And so you're like more interested in putting in money into your, into, that's just good for your long-term financial health. So that's that's the number one thing I wish I would have done. And especially because there's, there's no trade. I know this sounds like an ad, but like they don't sponsor this. I'm not giving you my promo code. If you want one, you can hit me up. I'll give it to you. And then... I get a free stock. I think you get a free stock for signing up, regardless if you use a promo code or not. Um, and if not, well, then definitely hit me up and we'll both get a free stock. That'd be amazing, because free stuff. Who doesn't love it? Um, but it, 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 it's there's no fees on like the trades, which is like when I started, I had my first brokerage account when I was 14, because I just got a job and I was like super interested in it. And like every trade was $7. Like, just to buy a stock was $7, and you couldn't buy fractional shares. Like, now, on a lot of apps and brokerages, you could buy, like, a, a piece of the buy. So, like, I know, like, on Robinhood, it works. Like, if you're like I got $5. You want to buy $5 of Tesla? Great, you can do that. Like, you used to not be able to, you had to buy the whole share, or that was it. And so, like, think, like, if you if you were me, 14-year-old, making $5 an hour, because that was the minimum wage at the time, five twenty five. that's what I was making. Um, so I'd work, you know, four hours, I'd get like 20 bucks and then like the government would take their cut. So I'm making like $14, you know, for less shift and like to, to buy any stock, I could buy a stock for $7. Like 
after a shift, a whole shift, which is just like, that just, you know, so like, I would buy a little bit, but then like the brokerage fees would eat me up, and then before you knew it, my account was worth zero, and I was like, well, this is stupid, and so I stopped, and I wish, I wish I would have focused a little more, figured out how to do it, maybe asked my parents for like that startup seed money to like, get over the fee, home because it was like, if you had so much money in, then they didn't take the, the fee or whatever, it was so stupid. It was, it was, I was kind of excited about that. Uh, and so that was, that's the big thing I would say is like, ah, oh man, if you can invest. The second thing, I think the most important thing that for everybody is, is learning how to communicate properly, learning. Um, and there's so much to that, like not, not being judgmental. There's a book that I think is really good to read is uh, by Alan Alda. He's a guy in MASH, if you ever watch the show MASH, but it's called, um, if I understood you, do you think my face would look like this? Or something like that. Just Google Alan Alda books. And he's got a couple about communication because he, like, he's real sparky about it, but I just read that one. And um, it's so good. It gives a lot of advice on like properly communicating. I learned so much from it. It's so good. So good. Uh, but learning how to, to talk to people, to, to understand like what they want, what you want, getting on the same page, that like, oh, that's so good. And like, cause me and my girlfriend broke up earlier this year cause I wasn't on that wavelength and she was very timid. So she was like, not gonna push me on things. And so things just kind of fell apart because I was up, in my, up my own ass. I'll be honest, I was up my own ass the whole time. And she was too timid to like tell me that I was up my own ass. And so we broke up, things were, got ugly, you know, it, it ended not great, not like we blew up and fought each other, we stayed friends, um, and then I, you know, I was reading these books, and I was just like, uh, and I was realizing, like, oh, I was being a selfish ass, like, okay, and so, you know, we kind of started patching things back up, kind of get, and now our relationship's, like, it's better than it has been, like, we're doing pretty good, I think. Um, and even if that doesn't work out, I really hope it does, uh, cause she's a gorgeous girl and I love her so much, but if it doesn't work out, the lessons that I've learned, I, I've taken already and like used them in other play and I'm just like, okay, open up my eyes. I'm like, fuck, I should have known this like forever. If I knew this 20 years ago, who knows what my life would be like. It's way different. Um, and the third thing, the, th the third most important thing. Um, that I wish I knew when I was younger is simply that you, you, you're, you're at the, okay, there's a quote I like, it's from a movie called Cashback, there's a short version and a long version, watch the short version, because it's way better, if you can find it, it's hard to find, but the quote is, the bad news is time flies, the good news is you're the pilot, and I think, there's, another, I'll give you another one, Pink Floyd. Uh, there's a song called Time. Listen to that song and understand that the alarm clocks at the beginning of time are supposed to be meant for the listener to wake you up, to like, hey, you are flying on autopilot. Like, wake the fuck up and get good going with your life. Um, and that's, it's, it's, there's a great book by Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. Uh, and it's called Extreme Ownership. And if I can only tell people to read one book, it's that book. Because the idea is that, like, you are the pot. You can, you can walk away from anything. You can walk towards anything. You can walk away from anything. It's easy to say that, but it is true. If you don't like your life right now and you have a vehicle, you can go get in your vehicle and just drive away. You know, there, there will be consequences, but you could do that. You could go drive somewhere else and start a new life and then deal with the fallout later. You know, there'll be cons it'll be really hard to do that. It'll be hard when you get to the new place to set stuff up. But you could do it, you know? You could quit your job. You could go get a new job. You can learn new skills. You could, you know, you could go ask that girl out. You could go ask that boy out. You could learn how to do makeup. You could go lose weight. You could go gain weight. Why, you're in charge. Whatever you want to do. No one can, unless you're in like prison, no one can really stop you from doing things. You know, again, there's consequences. But just, just know 
knowing it, just knowing that you're in charge, you're the pilot, taking ownership and taking responsibility. Back with, you know, me and my girlfriend, I was up my own ass, and I sat and I thought like, okay, what went wrong? And I was like, okay, a lot of stuff went wrong on both ends. Like, she was timid, didn't communicate well, I was up my own ass. I can't control her timidness. I can help her through that now that we're back together, and I can help her establish, I don't want to call it dominance, but I can help her establish those boundaries, and then so she'll, so she'll speak up, but I was up my own ass. I could fix that by going over the top the other way and balancing the act, and, and now things are going quite well. And so, like, take ownership, take responsibility. Everything that happens, it's you, it's your fault. Think of it like that. If things go well, it's your fault. If things don't go well, it's your fault. You know, what could you have done to fix them? And think of it post, post humorously, that's the wrong word, but uh, retroactively, let's say. If things go wrong, think, what could I have done to fix it? Not, oh, this wasn't fair. Oh, this team was better than our team. Oh, my boss is a dick. Like, no, how could you have done better? Like, maybe you're middle management and you're like, your employees screwed up. Like, okay, why didn't you train them better? Think of it, if you, if you can shift that mindset, the world changes and it opens up in such a big way and it happens quick, I promise you. Figure that out. Accept that mind shift, mind shift, shift, mindset shift. It, it'll change everything for you. Okay, the camera's gonna die, so I'm gonna give you one more bonus one. Book is called, it's Annie Duke is the author. The book is called Thinking in Bets. The Too Long Didn't Read version is, a lot of people approach life like chess, where they think they have all the information, but it's not, it's like poker, in that um, you don't have, you, and you can never have all the information, but you have to make a play anyway, or you can sit it out. But you gotta, you gotta be, everything you do is a bet, and even if you have a 90% chance of winning, 10% will still come, and that doesn't mean you made a bad decision. Sometimes the odds just don't play out, and that's okay. But if we keep making bets, if we keep making good bets, if we keep making smart bets, we will come out of that. So, there you go. That's why I watch bad movies. And there's four things I learned about why you should watch bad movies. Um, it's kind of one big package deal. I know it went real quick and I ran real fast, but the good news is that you can rewind this video and watch it again. So, I hope you're doing well. I hope this video finds you well. And if not, well, I hope that turns around for you. And if there's something I can help you with, I can talk you through. I'm here. I've setting up people with goals and stuff, getting people like focused. That gets me excited. So, um, if you're watching, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, hit the like button, all that stuff. Leave a comment. Yeah. So, hope you're doing well. Really. So, yeah. That's all I got. Um, Battery's gonna die any second, so thanks for watching. <laughs> I'll see you next time.